I'm in the uh, Photography Show TV studio again, and I'm here with Gerard Mankovitz, who is a music photographer of, uh, I'd like to, I'm going to say veteran, and I hope you won't be no, offended no, by that. Veteran is fine. Good. Vintage. Vint uh, vintage classic is even classic better, is isn't better. it? Yes, classic's good. And you've, you've come um, straight from the super stage. Indeed. And uh, what, have you been, what have you been talking about? I've been talking about 55 years of my career. Uh, I started taking photographs in the music business in 1963 and I've been taking photographs in the music business pretty much non-stop ever since. And, and, and how and what, why the music business? Well, when I, I served an apprenticeship when I was 15 and, and in the process of serving that apprenticeship I realised I, I wanted to be a photographer in show business. And then um, by photographing a pair of young actors who told me they were also singers and okay. they said to me we'd love you to photograph us as musicians and I thought oh this sounds interesting and I did and I got to know them I photographed their first album cover I got sort of signed by their record company to do other and suddenly I was in the record business taking album covers for young musicians at a time when they needed uh, new a new look i was a young photographer in a young business at the right time and of course you were doing this at a time where the, the album cover was really iconic it's before we went to these little little cds um, well it was a long time before you went yeah, to little cds absolutely. yes the, the the record cover was a a crucial part of the of the record buying process uh it was uh, you know records were quite expensive uh i think albums cost 12 and 6 uh, which was quite a lot of money and um, um, so you saved up and you made a decision and that was important and the the album cover was your link with the artist so it was a very important part of the process and uh, it was big you know it was 12 inches square and there weren't many opportunities in those days to have your photographs printed that large so yes it was something to aspire to and something that i really wanted now I know, Gerard, that, that you've worked with pretty much the, the good and the great of the mu music industry, so um, I know you'll probably be very modest, but let, let's drop a few names here. Who, who have you worked with, who's been really interesting to work with, and who's maybe not been quite so easy to work with? Well, funnily enough, somebody uh, on the super stage asked me uh, about bands that I didn't enjoy working with, and I, I could only generalise and say uh, heavy metal bands were frequently difficult. But um, the Rolling Stones I worked with in the mid-60s, and they were uh, fabulous to work with. Jimi Hendrix uh, in 67 was a, a sweet-natured, charming, humble, uh, lovely man who was also a delight to photograph. Most fantastic-looking person, fantastically charismatic and a great subject. Kate Bush, um, um, beautiful, uh, inspiring, a uh, frenetic, creative uh, woman, full of energy, um, a marvellous subject. Um, Eurythmics with Annie Lennox, another great woman in music. Uh, and earlier before that, Susie Quattro, yet another great woman in music. So, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of names. I could drop a few more if I could remember <laughs> them. Well, that sounds pretty good to me from, from a name-dropping point of view. And it's interesting, you said about the fact, obviously, you're photographing really creative people. Uh, on the whole, were they happy for you to then take control of the, uh, the visual side of the creativity and the, and the image taking, or, or did a lot of them want to get involved in that with you? Well, it's a collaborative process. I mean, the sort of photography that I do, which is studio-based, uh, the, the artist um, is um, committing themselves to having their photograph taken. Uh, so they're coming to work with me. We're working together to try and create images that, that they can live with that will hopefully promote them and, and that will bring to life uh, their vision of themselves as, as musicians. Um, and that's always been what I wanted to do. And I've been lucky enough to sort of do it for all this time. No, absolutely. And um, you're still working and you're still shooting? I'm still shooting occasionally. My primary activity these days, and it has been for a few years, is my archive, selling prints, producing exhibitions, making books, supplying magazines and newspapers, the media in general, with my work. 
That's been my primary activity for quite a while. But I still shoot occasionally, usually with old friends, but um, sometimes with new ones as well. And are you shooting um, digitally now, or are you, are you still using film? Uh, no, I'm shooting digitally, because that's what people expect now. Uh, and I have to, I have a Hasselblad. I'm a, I've always been a Hasselblad photographer. Uh, I had a Hasselblad 500C when I started, and I have a, a somewhat outdated H3 something now, which I love. It's a fantastic piece of kit. So yes, I shoot digitally. And, and, and have you? Do you feel that there's a, a difference in the way that you work digitally than the way you work ah, with film? That's an interesting question. Um, uh, yes, inevitably there is. Uh, what I don't like and what I've tried to avoid is I don't like people looking over my shoulder. So I don't, I don't shoot tethered or if I do shoot tethered I switch the monitor off so people can't see what I'm doing. And I shoot 12 exposures in a sequence like a roll of 120 film and then have a break. I try and create a sort of analogue pace in a digital world. Wow, okay. That, that's a really interesting way of doing it, isn't it? So you sort of, I guess that's your, your, your heritage of working with film has, has, has carried on into the, the mod, more modern well, way. Well, that, that's the way I like to work. I don't, you know, I'm not a photographer who shoots hundreds and hundreds of frames and then hopes that I've got a result. I, I hone it down and I use the monitor, if you like, in the way that I would have used a Polaroid in the olden days. And um, I like to shoot in a sequence of 12 because that feels natural to me. And if you haven't got it in 12, you're not going to get it. So um, that seems like a good a human pace. Digital photography can be so um, dehumanizing. And um, it's just a question of getting an awful lot of exposures. Dehumanizing in, in what way? How, how well, do you mean? it's dehumanizing for the subject because, a, a, I mean, I've been photographed quite a lot today by people with phones and, sure. and, and other photographers. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a rapid process. You look into the lens and somebody takes 30 pictures in a matter of milliseconds. Um, it's, it's the relationship that I used to have with my subjects, the trust that one built up. With, with one subject. Um, the human scale of the session, um, okay. that seems to be harder to achieve in this digital age. No, I, I understand that. And um, just interesting, maybe just to wrap up, if, if there was a young lad that came up to you at, at the show here, was thinking of, um, of, of launching a career as a, as a mu music photographer, what, what advice would you give them? Well, I would suggest that actually, if they're serious about being a music photographer, that they, uh, they work with local bands to them, uh, bands that they see performing in their local pubs or clubs. They try and befriend those bands and they start photographing them uh, creatively and in interesting ways, working with the band to make pictures that will hopefully promote the band. And if that band should be successful, um, then hopefully the, the photographer's work will, will follow the band and a career will build like that. I think that's really important. To, to this, this desperation to get into gigs, to get into festivals, I don't really see any future in that. I think you'd do much better to, to work with local bands, be a local photographer for local bands and build up from there. Brilliant. Okay, well that makes sense to me. Um, I'd just like to say it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and I'm sure um, the guys that came along and listened to you talk today really enjoyed it so thank you very much Gary thank you